Hey everyone, um, welcome to the June 2023 Shelby County State of the Market. I'm so excited that you're here. So we are going to jump right in. But before I do, if you can just put in the chat that you can see me, that um, you can hear me and everything's okay. So move on to let me know if you don't. So again, uh, welcome to this uh, welcome you to this Shelby County State of the Market. I'm going to do these every month and really I just want to, you know, to make sure that we know exactly what's going on and not get caught up in, in what we're hearing in the media and different things like that. So any myths, we're going to bust all those kinds of things in clickbait. So let's get started. So a little bit about me. If you don't know about me, <clears throat> I run the Your Key to Memphis team at EXP. So more than $2 billion worth of real estate in Memphis over the last 36 years. And that's landed us as the number two company in the state of Tennessee for realtors and number two teams with our previous real estate firm for the 10 consecutive years. Different articles in the Daily News Journal here in Memphis and then several different podcasts across the nation. All right, a little bit more. I'll be quick about myself, but um, my husband and I have five grown adult children. So the biggest addition we have is our newest grandchild, one and only grandchild, grandson Wyatt. They live in Denver, so they're far away, farther than what we want, but he's super precious. So we're thrilled for him, about six months old now. And then our four-legged dog um, baby at home, Stella, and then I love to run, uh, especially for St. Jude. So this is a neat event that we do. All right, so let's just dive right in and look at the numbers for uh, Memphis. So from May 2023 to last year. So total home sales, 1,230 compared to 2004 in 2022. So of course we're down 28, 38%, 38.6%. The sales price though is 230, 230,000 compared to 222,000 last year. So that's up 3.6%. Now those are kind of numbers that you're hearing different. You're hearing the sky's falling and you know values are dropping, all those kinds of things. Um, average sales price 275 compared to 266, again up 3.5%. And the monthly sales volume 339.1 million to 533.7 million. Of course, that's going to be different because of the inventory and figure one, total home sales. It's going to be different even with the sales prices that are up. So the markets are heating up. So currently 33% of the homes, as you can see, we're on the increase, are rising and are sold. 33% are sold over ask. What I do know is if you are thinking about putting your house on the market and it looks right and priced right again, they're selling and a lot of them still in multiple offers and again, over ask. So um, each month we're just going to talk about the mortgage rates and affordability just real quickly. So if you have a 30 year fixed mortgage payment for 500,000, um, the home it costs is 500,000. You're putting 20% down to the $400,000 loan. And um, today the rate's 6.375, so that's $2,495 a month, and the same payment at 3% would be $1,686. So the difference between today and the lowest rate is $809 for a higher payment. So as you know, that's affecting you know different people as well on affordability and what they can afford. All right, so I really, really want to clear the air on loan fees and FICO scores. So I know you've been hearing a lot about that. So that's a big scare headline. They want to tell you that if you have a high credit score, you are getting penalized from that. And that's absolutely not true. So let's jump right in. So the LLA PA is low level price adjustments. And this refers to LLPAs and they're imposed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And these two entities that guarantee a vast majority of new mortgages. So LLPAs are based on loan features such as your credit score loan to value ratio and occupancy, whether you're going to own the property or, or rent it. And most recently, your debt to income ratio. So a lot of variables on that as well. All right, so let's look at this example. All right, so we're going to look up here at the chart at 760 credit score. All right, so let's say that we are going to put 20% down. So you put 20% down, you have a 760 credit score. So that's going to cost you like 0.125, just a little bit more than what it did. And these change all the time too. So it's not like this is stagnant. Let's look at the same thing at 660. All right, you're going to pay 0.875% less. Now, all they've done is shorten the gap between the two. 
But let me tell you, you're always, always, always going to pay less money to get a loan with a higher credit score. We actually had people like, I'm just going to take my credit because this is ridiculous because, you know, the buzz and the clickbait was like, you know, you're going to get penalized for having good credit and people spend so much time making sure their credit's okay. All that is just not true. Let's look at another example. 760, you're going to put 25% down. Well, it cost you 0% difference. It didn't change at all. We'll go down to 660 as well. It's 0.875 less, you know, that they're going to pay for this. Again, there's still a lot of money. It depends on all those variables that we looked at before. Um, and this, they just, you know, shorten the gap between the two. Not a huge short either, just a little bit that they condense the gap. And if this doesn't make sense, just reach out and ask me about it. I'm happy to have a phone call if that's better, you know, so we can clarify that for you as well. All right, of course, a great question, of course, is what will the Fed do next? All right, last month, if you know that the Feds, last week, the Feds met and they did not change the interest rate. So everybody's trying to predict, you know, what's going to happen with all these different things. So we're going to look at the three next dates that the Feds had meetings for and see what everybody's predicting on that. So the current target rate for the July 26th meeting is 500 to 525. So that, that means the interest rate is 5% to 525. And then we'll get into how it goes above that in the next little presentation part of it. So the July 26th meeting, Wall Street is betting 28% that it stays the same. 28% of the people are saying it's going to stay the same. There's another 53.8% that's saying it's going to go up. Um, 525 to 550, and another 17% up 550 to 575. So about 70% think it's going to go higher. All right, then we'll look at um, September 20th for the next meeting. 500 to 525 again, 31% say it's going to stay the same. 3% says it's going to go down. And then again, there's 50%, 49.5% say it's going to go higher, and then 15 on top of that. So 65% say it's going to go higher at some point. Now, this is changing all the time. I mean, if I if you go back, we can go back and look at it when the meetings were, what the predictions were, what actually happened. It's just a prediction. <laughs> There's so many variables in the market, as you know, um, that we're seeing with, you know, recession and different numbers like that. In November, 500 to 525 again, 42% finally say we're going to stay the same. 9% saying so going to drop a little, and then 45% saying it's going to go up. So 50-50 chance that it's going to stay the same come November. All right, on to mortgage rates. So for 50 years, the 30-year mortgage rate has moved in unison with the 10-year Treasury yield. So 50 years, here's the 10-year Treasury, and then the green is a 30-year fixed mortgage rate, and that spread is 1.72. So what that difference is, is that the um, mortgage rate is what the banks can charge. It's just the difference between that and the 10-year treasury year. It, they pass, pass it on to us as a consumer, and that's what the difference has been for the past 50 years. So now if we look at 2023, look at the spread now, 2.75 at the beginning of the year, and we're at 3.2 uh, at the end of May, and the average spread is 2.961. The only time the spread approached or exceeded 300 basis points was during periods of high inflation or economic vol volatility, like those seen in the early 1980s or in the great financial crisis of 08 and 09. Chief Economist of Keeping Current Matters. All right, again, here's where we are with the, the spread. So if you look at the 10-year Treasury in the 30-year, and he, this is exactly what he's talking about. We had 1980, about 1985, 2008, we know what happens then, and then here's where we are now. And then again, you can see the spread for what it's been, the average, of course, and then we're at 2.78. It's reasonable to assume that the spread and therefore mortgage rates will retreat in the second half of the year. If the Fed takes its foot off the monetary tightening pedal and provides investors with more certainty. However, it's unlikely that the spread will return to its historical average of 170 basis points, as some risks are here to stay. And that's the chief economist from First American. So next, we'll just look at what home prices are doing. 
All right, you've heard a lot of different things about what's going on with this. So Case Shiller, there's three companies that we're going to look at that do this all the time and see what they say about it. So again, 2022, we see it's green, and then the end, the first six months, and the last six months of 2022, we see red. And then is it going up, you know, 2023, which is exactly what we're seeing. Again, FHFA, price is stabilizing, same thing, first part of 2022. Then we get next six months, you know, kind of dipping not as much as before, and then inching back up again. CoreLogic, price is stabilizing, it's their prediction. First six months, 2022, the next six, and then here we are again. Now we're going to put the chart all together so you can see they're all seeing the exact same thing. So here's the thing about this as well. In 2008, it took us six years to be able to see green. We're talking about six months. So the housing market is strong. Again, 2008 took six years to see green. And now, you know, we're, we're talking six months again. Zillow, you know, love them or hate them, whatever you want to do, wherever your stand is on Zillow, doing the exact same thing on their prediction. Price is stabilizing. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about the unicorn market and what that means. So for years, we've ridden a horse on all of this information you know it's all stayed the same same kind of average same kind of things that we're looking at and then in 2020 we went in the barn to get our horse and we came out on a unicorn so 2020 and 2021 um, real estate never ever ever and i've been selling 36 years so even ever ever past me <laughs> forever has never seen you know what we saw in the in the unicorn years of 2020 and 2021 Home appreciation, you can see what's standard, seven, five, four. Unicorn years, of course, we know was off the chart. We'll never see like that again. And we're at 5% 2022. So, and you can see the predictions before. They're thinking three to four to 5% again for 2023. So we were back before the unicorn years. Pending listings, look again. Pre-unicorn years, we're here. We're exactly where we were in the pre-unicorn years for houses that are pending. Showing traffic, we're above the pre-unicorn years. This is where it was showing traffic, you know, off the charts. We know how crazy it was in 2020 and uh, 21 and 22. And actually, the unicorn years are the end of 2020, all of 21 and 22. And then 2023, where we are as well. And days on the market again. So we've got the averages here. And then we've got, you know, we dropped, you know, how fast that we're going. And then now we're at 43. So we're still below what we were before the unicorn years. Homes for sale. Now, this is obviously where we're going to see a difference. We just have the inventory shortage across the nation right now um, on different levels. But, you know, 1.2, we're at 500. So we've got like less than half of what we have seen before the unicorn years. But more than 2021 and 22 months inventory. So that's called the absorption rate. So let me tell you about that. Anything that if you see is six months is a, a normal market, means it's not a buyer, it's not a seller's market. If you see numbers below six, typically is uh, a seller's market and above six is a buyer's market. You know, you could even say four to six. So you're seeing more of a seller, uh, you know, average market here, balanced market. I would say in here, so here we're still, you know, evidently super seller's market, still, still low, a seller's market, we're at 2.9. So we're still better than what we were before the unicorn years. Fewer foreclosures during the unicorn years. Well, do you know why that is? It's because that a moratorium on them. We couldn't foreclose on houses then. So that's why it's fewer. So you're hearing the numbers again, clickbait, the media wants you to be panicked about different things. Yes. Are they higher? Absolutely. Yes. But are they what they were before? Like at 17, absolutely not. There's still half so of those numbers. But you know what changed is you're always going to have foreclosures. Unfortunately, people always go through you know difficulties in their lives. Some people lose jobs, lose a spouse, just different things that happen to them that they can't afford to pay the mortgage anymore. So it just happens, unfortunately. But it's not because of these doom and gloom kind of things. All right. So um, any questions, I'm going to take time, send me an email, and I'll answer all of your questions um, specifically, and I'll take the time to do that. They're all going to come from me. I'm researching all this information to give you the most valuable information, um, just to let you know clearly what's going on in the market. 
So if you scan this QR code, you'll get the updated value on your home in super quick time that you can kind of see, and then you just keep updated because then everybody likes to know what their investment is doing. We would love to have for you to have that tool. And then again, um, I answer all questions personally. So if you send it to Melissa at yourkeytomemphis.com, then I am more than happy to answer all the questions that you may have and explain anything you know, in a different way um, to help you understand anything that we talked about today. So I uh, appreciate you joining and you'll get a copy of this webinar as soon as it's over. And um, we're going to do this every month. So just stay tuned. You'll be invited automatically to hop on and just get super quick information about what's going on in the Shelby County market. All right. Thanks for joining.